Hello, this is Sophie Lawson from sophielawson.com and this is episode 144 of the Sophie Art Podcast, which is a little podcast that I do about the art and things. And this one is an article, we're looking at a little article from the book Sojo Fashion Manga Art School. Who, it's a book by the artist Irene Flores. Little Dennis is with us, he's excited for this one, so am I. And what we're going to be looking at is, well, what I've done is, one of the articles, it looks at a load of different fashion looks for different characters. So I've picked three of my favourites, and we're going to walk through three little characters, talking about their fashion and stuff. It's going to be cool, this, I think. (laughs) But I hope you had a nice Christmas, and uh, have a happy new year and stuff. And all that's left, really, is let's get into it. (coughs) Doing. So little Dennis, he's getting us right into it. Let's have a look at this then. I think little Dennis, I think little Dennis thought this was the best one we've done so far. Well, not maybe not the best article, but it's certainly the most. It was one of the most fun ones, and it was was so inspiring. So this, what is the book is called Sojo Fashion Manga Art: How to Draw Cool Looks and Characters by the artist. Irene Flores and I'll put links and everything in the description in the show notes and at sophielawson.com and also in the video at youtube.com slash sophielawson what I've done is chapter 5 of this book is called Cool Looks Step by Step and what they do is they how many is there? I think there's a total of 14 different characters so you've got 6 female characters four bloke characters and four groups of characters and what they do is they basically go through the process of creating like a different character and well this is brilliant so we're going to look at the article properly in a minute but what have I put here so I've, I've put oh yeah I did do a, a click look video of this on the on my YouTube which you can have a look I'll put a link in the description and stuff I'm going to start by reading the intro to this part of the book so that we know what the chapter's all about. And this is what it says. There is really no way to tell you how to go about creating characters. Do you design them first and then write a story to fit what you have drawn? Or do you come up with a history and create a picture to fit it? Maybe they just start as a random passing idea and before you know it, you're figuring out love interests and favourite (laughs) colours. Whatever works for you. This section is about fleshing out an idea and an image by representing stereotypical archetypes that may or may not actually fit said stereotype. Keep in mind that creating a a unique character doesn't have to be about pulling the wildest possibilities into one place. Developing a believable character that your audience can (laughs) sympathise with and care about centres around giving them something they can learn to understand. This depth is what separates a beloved moosey bookworm from a forgotten one. The next challenge is to convey all of that with your art. I love this bit, look. People talk, gesture, stand, dress and make different expressions depending on the things they have experienced and the life they have lived. Whether it is a socially awkward boy who never dresses well and always holds himself stiffly or a confident and cheerful young girl who seems determined to bounce through life, this section will show you how to put that personality into your character designs. The reason I wanted to read all of that is because it really sums up how much creating a character is not just about the visuals, it's about the story. But what I loved was how she said, "You do, well, all these articles I've looked at so far, they've always said about starting with writing. So get get your story down and then create the sto- create the character off of that story. But I've also as I've gone through these articles, I've noticed as you're creating the character, certain things will start changing the story. So you might, for instance, you'll be creating your character and you might put, say, I don't know, like a handbag on them or something. They might be holding a handbag, and then all of a sudden you think, ah, this character likes shopping. So then you go back to the story that you wrote and you say they like shopping and all of a sudden you you don't know but you might end up with a character all about shopping and it didn't start out like that. So 
What I love is it's, it's saying how it's a very organic process, creating a character. Yeah, I love that. And I also love it because it means it's, there's no rules. There is rules, but there's not rules. I like that. So what have I put here? I've put, yeah, the full article has six females, four blokes and four groups. For this article, I'm going to look at three of my favourites. So what have we got? We've got Su- Suzanne Rachel Hartfield, who is the queen of drama. <laughs> She's cool, she is. And I picked her because of her pose. She's got this really cool little pose, which I'll talk about in a minute. The next one I like was the socialite. She's called Odessa James. And I picked her because of her outfit. Again, I'll talk through her outfit in a minute. And the last one, this is my favourite one, actually. It's the girl next door. Super cutie she is. She's called Trey McKinney. The girl next door. And I picked her because of her vibe. But there's lo- there's a few other ones in here. There's another... Well, what is it? There's another... Another 11 characters in here. So there's quite a lot of characters in this one. And what's the main takeaways from this article that I got? So what have I put here? I've put... Yeah, I love how each girl has a story. I'll go through the article in a minute. But we well, it starts out with a little story about the character. So we get to know this, the character. And then we get to see the character coming to life. It's brilliant. I love that there's this little stats breakdown. Because what they've done is... Each character has got like little words with stars next to them. So one of the words might be social. And then they have two stars. But you might have another character who's got, say, five stars for social. What I liked about that was, is it's easy to check if the character you're drawing is fitting with your with your words. So I like that. You create a little story, you then create a bunch of words, which sums up the character. Like you might have fun. F- well, one of them, the ones here is like family, dramatics, recreation, social, sport and study. But all the characters have got different words, which I think is cool. So what happens is, as you're creating your character, you can you can keep going back and saying, let's say one of them is fun, and the, the fun factor is eight is five stars. You're creating your character, you might think, this pose isn't really that fun. So it's a, it's, a, it's a really good way of checking what you're doing against what you wanted to do, like your vision. And also what's cool is, as you're creating a character, you might think of a new word, and you can put the word down here. So I like that. I thought it was, it was really cool. I also like that we get two different poses of the character. So you get the one main pose, which is the one that it, the, the article walks through, like the process of it. You also get another pose, which I like that, because it's almost like you're getting a bit more... <laughs> what's it called? You're getting a bit more of their sort of personality with these different different poses and stuff. And also, what I love is we get these sketches as well, which is brilliant. It's what the, You get like alternative styles. So you get to see what the character might have looked like, which I like that. And then what we also get, the main piece of the article really is a five-step process and it's step one is striking a pose and what I put for that was it's this is all about gesture getting the idea down then we move into step two which is filling it in which is I put adding a bit more structure and thinking about the outfit so the first one you just get the pose down then you start thinking about what they're going to be wearing then the next bit is the third bit roughing the details So this is, I put it almost finished. You start adding your hair and accessories and you also start tightening up the the shapes and stuff. So like the arm might be in it, you might start moving the arm a bit, making it feel a bit better. And then the the fourth phase is cleaning up and inks. And what I've put on this one is you decide on your design. So you you basically, you're committing and you make it look nice and sexy. And then the, the, the fifth bit is you're adding your colour which is the final bit. And I put here, this is the finishing. And this is when you bring her to life, which is cool. And the article also has little colour palettes for each of the characters. And I think that is basically it. So let's get into the first one. So the, f- the first character we're going to be looking at is the Queen of Drama. And she is called Susan Rachel Hartfield. I love that. I love that these characters have got names. So what I think I'll do is I'll read their little backstory... And then we'll go through what 
what I learnt from this little bit of the article. I'll just read the first sort of few few sentences. It says, A few lucky stars are just born to drama, exuding it not only on the stage, but in every aspect of their life. Susan Rachel Hartfield loves the spotlight and happens to be pretty good at getting into it, whether it takes hard work, long crying bouts, or just accepting the lead female role. So she's a drama queen. <laughs> yeah, so the little stat she's got is, it says, perfectly po- poised, Susan. Study, two stars. Sport, one star. Social, two star. Recreation, three. Family, one. And then dramatics, five stars. So she's all about the drama, this one. The queen of drama. And the first thing I noticed, before I even looked at anything, was her pose. So what they've done is, on the pose... She's got her arm. Oh, she's got her hand. Her little hand is like, how do you describe? Well, the way I described this was, it's like a, it's like that. Oh my God, pose. You know when those girls go, they go, Oh my God. It's it's sort of like that. You get that sort of vibe from her. So she's got her two little hands are very expressive in this pose. The first one is on a is on a chest, pushing against her chest. The other one is pushed out with her fingers very straight and pointy. And it, again, it is very straight and pointy. So the main thing I got from it was it was like a, it was a, oh my God. And what it is, that is drama. Those sort, those girls that go, oh my God, I can't believe it. That is all about drama. So I really feel like this pose nailed the drama queen aspect. So what have I put in my little notes? I've, I've said I picked her due to her pose, a little hand gesture, pointy fingers. And I also like the shape between her legs. There's this beautiful little shape going on between her legs. I've always liked that. And well, yeah, and that's the the reason that's there is because of the, the raised foot. So uh, uh, what is it? A right foot is raised slightly. So it means a right foot, a, a right leg is bent. The other one's straight. So it creates this cool shape right in between her legs, which is cool. I've also, ah, oh, yeah, the story, it made me go, ah, oh, because I felt a bit sorry for her. Because what, what does it say? Down the bottom, it says something really, it made me go, ah. Oh. Yeah, while her attention to self may not have made her popular, it has found a, a, a solid place on the stage. So, ah, oh, listen. So there's no doubt that one day soon she'll be successful enough that even her busy family and friends will find the time to come watch a show. So what, what I like there was, basically, she is she has given everything to be become famous and she's sort of lost her family and friends. So I sort of felt like, oh, she hasn't got any, she ain't got any friends or anything. I felt a bit sorry for that. But let's go through this little piece of the article then. So the first one... Is, the first bit is called Striker Pose. And what we've got is we've got a little... It's a very simple pose, really. It's straight. It's a, it's a character just standing up with their hand pointed out to the side. And what we put? I put confidence. Trying to be confident because there's a little write-up about this pose and it says that she's all... It says she always stands and gives and sits up straight. Holds her head up high and gives off haughty vibes. The thing is, when I when I looked at her, I thought she's trying to be confident, but she isn't. And at, at first, I scribbled it out because I thought maybe that's not right. Later on, when I look at one of the other girls, I realised, yeah, this 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 girl here, Susan, she is actually she's trying too hard to be confident. Yeah, she's not relaxed enough, and. The what I liked here was she said the artist said she used stiff angles, so her arms have got stiff, the stiff angles of her arms, and her legs as well. And what that is is it's unnatural. It it creates an a natural feeling about her pose because it's very sort of stru- it's very straight, yeah, not curvy or anything. So even though she's trying to be confident, her it's, she's given her way that she isn't actually confident and the artist here said it, they used the word insincerity which I think is cool that so what I liked about that was the little things that you can put in the pose to sort of tell the story I suppose what have I put here as well 
suppose it's just lines. Oh yeah, this bit here for the first phase. All we've got really is, is it's almost like a stick man. It's just a little gesture drawing really with angles for the for the what's it shoulders, waist, the hips and the knees. So we're getting the angles. So all they're doing in this first phase is is working out the angles, working out they've got little circles for the joints. So it's all really this bit is just about getting getting a pose on the paper. The next bit is called fill it fill it in. And what I've done here is what I've said on my notes, I've said the clothes the clothes don't move much as she doesn't make what's it? She doesn't make unnecessary movements. Yeah, that was cool as well. So you, what happens here is you're starting to put the clothes on the character, but you've got to be thinking about how the character's moving. Because how the character's moving is going to determine how the clothes are behaving. I like that. I thought that was quite cool. And then the clothes go on top of the pose, wrapping around the pose. So you're starting to you're starting to think about how the clothes are fitting on the character, like the perspective and stuff. Oh, this is it. Expressive hands. That equals dr drama queen. So we start to get the expressive hands now. Before, in the first phase, it was just a line. It was two little lines, like at a right angle. Well, now, we've still got the same sort of right angle, but there's a little bit of a curve, which brings in a bit of sexy to me. So her hand is still very pointy, but there's a slight little curve going on, which I like that. And then I've said, even hand on her body looks expressive, which is cool. Yeah, the hand that's on her, on, on her body is up by her neck. Really, that should just be a basic hand. It should almost, it shouldn't, it it almost should just be sitting there. But even that hand, somehow, it's got expression in it. And I, what I thought was the reason that's happened is because the hand is is not straight with the body. There's a slight curve to the hand, like raised up above the body, which I think that is what gives it the. That's what gives it the sort of expression. It's quite amazing how they've done that. I think. Again, little things. I always notice that little little things they create quite a lot. Little things have quite a lot of power. I've noticed that. And then I've said I can imagine her shaking her head like, "Yeah, this is cool." This character, the way she's posing, if if this character could start moving, I'd imagine she would st she'd be doing that sort of, "Oh my god," and like shaking her shaking her body from side to side. That's what I imagine this one. The next bit is called build. What's it called? Roughing the details. What I've put here is I put building up the clothes and the boots. So you're starting to add your accessories. You're starting to sort of make the clothes more detailed. You put your hair in as well. And what have I put here? Fingers. Yeah. So this is cool. At first, the hand is just a line. The next bit, we've got basic, a big, a big bastard basic shape really. And then all of a sudden now. At the third phase, the details, we start to get the fingers and the pointy fingers and stuff. And you also start, you start getting the face as well, the facial features. And I've said, oh, yeah, I've said, even though you've got all this detail coming in, it's still got the essence of the first pose. So in other words, the gesture is still inside of that, which I think is brilliant. I think that was it for that. The fourth bit, cleaning up in the inks. Well, this is beautiful. This this is where it really sort of it becomes very sexy. But again, it's still very much like the first one. It's just nice and clean now. Yeah, it's cool. What have I put here? I put for the fourth bit: ink, ink lines, clean and smooth. Oh yeah, what they said in the article. She said, keep the li ink lines clean and smooth. Especially since Susan's clothes are perfectly pressed. <laughs> so again, we've got that thing of that sort of telling a story. Susan cares about her appearance so much that she's making sure all of her clothes are perfectly pressed. So you've got to reflect that in the character. So I like that. So it shows you how you, the sort of lines that you use are going to affect the way the fabric feels. This is cool. And what else was it? I think that's it. And then the last bit, number five, is the colours. So this is where we get the final colours. And what we've got is we've got 
you've got your hair colours, which is three, there's three bits of it, it's red, two types of red and a sort of a, a pinky, then you've got your three types of skin colours, you've got your blue eyes, and then you've got your lips, pink lips, which is cool. But the colours on this one, I love it. She's got striking red hair, and her outfit sort of, it, it blends in beautifully, complements her hair. I think she even said that in the thing. Yeah, she did. She says, Susan wears always wears colours that complement her complexion and hair. What it done is, she's wearing a grey a grey sort of schoolgirl outfit, I suppose, with a little tie and a little check skirt. But the check skirt has got little hints of red in it. And also, the, the little badge on her top, on her little top, it's got little bits of red in it. So it's, it's bringing her hair and her outfit together. She's cool. She's also got little red nails on, little red nails to match her hair, which this is something I noticed. This this character here, Susan, she's the only girl who has nail polish on. All the other ones haven't got nail polish on, which again, for me, that was like, this is a little thing. She cares, she's so sort of focused on her appearance that she, she's even caring about her nails, whereas all the other girls are very laid back, so they don't really care about their nails. <laughs> They're still sexy though, which is cool. And then the final bit we've got here, I love this bit. We've got Susan's other looks. So what we've got is we've got three little sketches of this character and one of them we see we see the back of her sort of still wearing the same sort of outfit but this outfit is amazing. What you've got is she's got like a it's almost like a suspender belt but it goes from the back of her neck down to the back of her little jacket which is cool. So what you end up with is you end up with a like a curvy body shape where her bum's b- being pushed out, but you've got a nice straight line going straight up as well. So you've got like a curvy with a straight line. But the the other the other ones, they've got really... She looks a lot sadder in the other sketches, I felt. But that there's one sketch here which is so beautiful. I'd love to see that sketch as a finished, a finished one. I almost feel like that is actually... A sexier pose as well but I don't think it captures the drama enough so the pose she picked really did nail the drama I think what have I put here oh yeah I've put here so it still feels like her so even though it's different it still fi- it still does feel like her which is cool and then I've put to sum up Susan I've put very sexy well to do but I s- Looking at this art, this little piece here, I felt like she needs to relax more. I feel like she'd be more successful if she relaxed into herself. Yeah. And then I've also put, it's a simple pose, but it speaks a lot. And again, this is due to the little things, like the little, the way her foot's raised up, the way her hand's pushed out, and the way her hand's raised up as well. Little things, tiny little things like that, have taken this, what would... It, it could have been quite a boring pose, really, but it's added so much, so much emotion to this pose, which is cool. So let's get into the next one. The next one we're going to be looking at is the socialite, and this is a character called Odessa James. I've put she's way more expressive, content, and confident than Susan. Yeah, and I've also put she's she's more relaxed. She and her, her pose even her pose is more relaxed with more curves and. A lot more sort of there's not as many straight straight lines in this in this pose compared with Susan, so it's quite funny. Susan is trying her hardest to be confident, but Odessa she doesn't even have to try, and because she doesn't have to try, she's more confident. It's like a natural confidence. What have I put here as well? I've put yeah. I was, well, what I said was I I felt like Susan. I felt like Susan, the first character, would actually be more, would actually be prettier for me. I think she would be prettier than Odessa if she just relaxed. But because she's not relaxed, she's a bit stiff. And even her pose is stiff as well. So it just shows you that if, you, if you're relaxed, you're actually going to be sexier than somebody who might be sexier than you, but it isn't, is, is a bit stiff and stuff. <laughs> That's quite cool. 
Robert Pia. Oh, I picked her because of her outfit. She's got a sexy little skirt on. A little, what's it called? I don't know what they're called. It's like one of those jumper things without the sleeves. And then a little shirt underneath. And she's got these white stockings on as well, which is sexy. And then what's quite funny is she's got these really basic flat shoes on. Casual shoes, which are green. The rest of her outfit is grey and pink. And these shoes are uh, are green. So it, it doesn't, it's a bit weird that. I felt like those shoes are a bit sort of, why are you wearing those shoes? I would have made them pink, at least. What have I put? Oh, pink and brown is lovely. Because this character is actually brown. She's a brown-skinned character. And she's wearing this, like, pale pink. And I just thought to myself, how beautiful is the colour combination of pink and brown? I love it. I love that. So it's cool. So let's start with a little story. So... Odessa's story is popularity, well she's a socialite, and it says popularity can be effortless if you happen to look, smile and act like Odessa James. <laughs> With her exotic appearance, excellent wardrobe and honest personality, that word really stuck out at me. Throughout the whole of this article, I kept thinking that word honest really sums her up the best. She's being totally honest. And it's quite funny because the first character, Susan, she used the word insincerity. So she's not being honest. And this one is complete opposite. What have I put as well? What's it say here? It says, Audassa turns the heads of men and women alike and never one to be just a pretty face. Audessa has a complex understanding of people to back up all the time she spends with them. And it's, it goes on and on a bit. But... It, her little stats are, she's got four stars for study, three for sport, five for social, five for recreational, three for family, and five for percep- perceptive. So this one, well, I think she's cool. She's a really cool character. I think I said it at the end of this article, though. I said I think I was, I'd be a bit, I'd feel a bit sort of intimidated by her. Because she is so, to me, I feel like she's very extrovert. Yeah, at least in the pose that the the artist goes with. She's very extrovert. So let's start here with the first bit, striking a pose. The pose here is, is, is completely different to the first one. The first one was very stiff and static. This one, you've got movement. And even in the little stick man pose, you can sort of see the movement because the, the, leg is, the legs are moving. It's cool, that. And then her... Her, one of her arms is raised up as well. So again, what that does is it it creates a, a really nice shape. A really nice shape between her arm and her hip, which is cool. But what I loved about this one, as I was looking at it, I noticed it's almost like we've got a straight line going from her foot right to her... It, it goes right through her hand, which I thought that was cool. So we've got like a... You've got like a straight line going on one side... And then you've got this curve going on the other, which I thought was brilliant. And then her other arm is straight, which gives it like a balance. I thought I was, I like that. So the first bit, what did I put? I put movement. The main word was movement. And I've put, she's still got pointy fingers, (laughs) which I like that. Yeah, even in the first bit with the stick man, she's still got pointy fingers. And I've put, it's more curvy than Susan. And I've put, what have I put? I said, this is funny. The pose could be giving, oh yeah. That pose, if you didn't know what was going to happen later, you could look at that. It looks a bit like she's giving the bird, <laughs> giving the finger. Like, suck it. <laughs> but I like that. It's cool. So the, the next bit was called fill it in, which is where we're adding a little bit more, clo- we're adding a bit more detail and stuff. And, oh, this is cool. So this one, because we've got the movement in the pose, we've got to remember that with the clothes, which means that the clothes have got to be moving. She's brilliant. So the first one, the clothes were very straight and, like, drooping down her body. On this one, the, the clothes are... You can almost feel, like, the wind moving the clothes about, which is cool. But what they've done is they've got the clothes moving, but you can still see the... still see, like, the bum of the character through the clothes 
which I like that. See, even though you've got the clothes on it, you can still see the pose. And that's because they, they might want to change the clothes and stuff. So we haven't finalised the design yet. I've also put, it's, it's a sexy casual look. I'm getting like a sexy casual vibe from this one. And then what I've also said is, they've pushed the original pose. So if you look at this bit here, if you compare this, this part here with the first bit, what happens is, the, the leg at the back, it, there's, there's almost like more, there's a bit more sort of curvy to the feet, especially. And also the bum is getting pushed out a bit more, which creates more of a curve on a bum. But the, the leg, which points up, it's actually come in a bit. So you can, you, you can sort of see how they're, they're, they're playing with the original pose to get it a bit more bit more the way they wanted it and I've put so they pushed the original pose the fuller figure on you got a fuller figure on the right on on the right side but they pulled the left side in a bit so again what I was doing is by pulling in the left side it's actually going to push the right side a bit more <laughs> it's quite funny that because what happens is everything's related to each other so you can make something on the right side appear more by changing something on the left side and what I noticed was all the energy is on the right side of this character, but the the uh, the arm on the left side, it sort of balances it. Because if that arm was hidden, it would look a bit. It would be. It would look a bit like the character's going to fall over or something. So the arm, the straight arm, which is a, which is it looks like it's just sitting there doing nothing, is actually playing a really important part in that. That's what I think. Next bit. What's it say here? What have I put? Oh, I've just read the, bit, the wrong bit for the thing. <laughs> well, what have we put? Curvy bum, nice line of leg through the arms. Yeah, we've got. That's when I. This is when I noticed that there's a there's a line going through a leg, through her arm, and what it does is it sort of like it puts like an energy through her whole body, and it sort of brings her arm and her leg together, almost like an invisible line or something. What else? What else is here? Oh yeah, big smile. You're starting to see a smile now. So they've like overemphasized the smile in this one. And then what have I put? Nice line of leg through the arm. Yeah, it creates a nice shape. I've, what I did was I sort of, I noticed that there was a nice line going through the, the pose, but it also created a nice shape between the arm and the, and the bum, like, which I thought was cool. And that was something that they did as they moved through the, the pose, like, because in the first pose, her bum was not pushed out as much. So the, the shape between the things wasn't that good. And also the clothes, because the clothes are moving, what it does is it, it brings the, it creates a more interesting shape. It's a much more interesting shape between, that negative space is much more interesting because of the moving clothes. And also in the third phase, we get her shoes and her stockings, which is quite cool, and her hair. <laughs> and the fourth bit, this is, What's it? The cleaning up and the inks. So what have I put here? I've put keeping it real. Yeah. Oh, this is cool as well. She said, because the clothes are moving, what's it? Her clothes are never pristine. I like that. Yeah. So firstly, her clothes are moving. So you've got to be thinking about that as you're putting your lines down. But also, this character is so laid back and relaxed within herself, she doesn't need to even bother ironing her clothes. So that was that was reflected in her in her clothes, which I feel like links in with the word of the socialite, because somebody who's super social, you you need to be relaxed. So if your clothes are all a bit messy, I feel like people will be like, well, I like this character, this person, because then they're, they're not fussed about their appearance, which means the person around them won't be as fussed about their appearance. Whereas with the first character, Susan, she's so prim and proper, people feel a bit uncomfortable around her, I think. So I like that. Again, little things are really important. And then what happens there is we get our nice tidy lines and also we've got a nice little texture going on with her scarf, which was nice. So before the scarf, it was just represented by these squiggles. But now we get we get like a fluffy texture to it. So I like that. And then the final bit. Well, I put, well, what did I put? I put, there's more wrinkles. Yeah. 
in that bit, in the fourth bit, where I left again. I've got internal burps here. <laughs> even though we've still got, even though we've got all the detail going on now, you've still got the energy of the first one. So what they've done is they've managed to capture the energy in the first bit and keep it, even with the detail, which is cool. And in the last bit, number five, this is where she mentioned about the colour of her skin. She said she looks, she looks good in vivid. Well, it says light. Light bright colours are striking with her skin tone. So I like that. So again, the choice of the clothes has to sort of balance with the character, which was like the first one. The first character, the clothes were complementing her hair. Now the clothes are complementing her skin, which I thought was thought that was quite nice. That. So ah, oh, this is cool as well. So this character here, she's got other looks. Her little sketches and stuff. Uh, on this one, she's sitting down on her phone as, she's, as if she's having a casual conversation. And then you've got these two little f sketches of her face. She's so adorable in this one. I feel like she's a lot more cuter in this. But I would actually say she probably looks a bit too much like the girl next door in that. So I feel like the, the, the pose that they picked, her face, she's got big massive smile with her mouth open which sort of links in with the socialite socialites are always talking so i feel like it was good that she had her mouth open but what i noticed was the, the little pose we've got which she didn't use the artist didn't use she's wearing purple leggings with like an orange top and i just thought i don't like those colors i don't feel like those colors well i feel like the orange might go with her skin but the purple, for me, it doesn't fit. I feel like those colours are, are not really fitting with this character. What have I put? More girly. Yeah, she looks a lot more girly. Which I didn't think really f fitted in with her word. The socialite. So I feel like it was good that she didn't pick these poses. I said she's adorable with her hair up. <laughs> yeah, because in this she's got her hair up and she looks cool. She looks so cute with her hair up. I love it. You really see the shape of her face and it also pops her eyes. Her eyes look a lot bigger when her hair's up. And I said I don't like the yellow purple combination, but I thought the sketches were beautiful in this. And then, so to sum up Aldessa, what have I put? I f well, this is what I said. I said I think she would be, I think I would find her quite intimidating because she's so confident, yeah, and sort of extrovert. I feel like she'd be a bit too much for me. But I said, lovely colours, but I'm not sure about the shoes. And then what have I put? Oh, yeah. What was it? Yeah. So in the pose that she picked, for me, she's quite she's quite intimidating for me because she's an, she looks like an extrovert. In the sketches, in the sketches one, I would not be intimidated. I would love to be her friend because she looks a lot more gentle. She looks a lot more gentle in, in her little sketch. So I wouldn't be as intimidated with her there. What else have I put? Oh, her full hair. I love her hair. Her hair is like, it reminds me of the model Yasmin Petty. It's very full and alive. It's like a character itself. And I've, I've put the word friendly. I feel like she's super friendly. And, well, what I said here was... I feel like she'd been when I said I felt like she'd be intimidating. I've put oh no, <laughs> is when I said I'm not sure about her shoes. I said I'm not sure about her shoes. I've also put underneath, but she don't care. Yeah, she wouldn't care what I think about her shoes. That's probably why those shoes are so brilliant. It's like the shoes don't quite fit with the outfit, but it's like she doesn't care. She's so relaxed within herself. She don't care that her shoes are don't fit with the thing. So it's almost like. Everything in this character, it beautifully goes in with the word socialite. So this is two characters, I feel like they nailed the word that they were going after. And the last one, this is my favourite. This is the girl next door. This is a cutie, this one. What's she called? Trey McKinney. Trey McKinney. Definitely my favourite. So I said I picked her due to her vibe. She's got this sort of 
it's almost like you want to you want to hug her, squeeze her. She's like a little anime character to me. This is the one that's the most like a, a manga character. Big big brown eyes as well. Little cutie she is. She's my favourite. I said I want to hug her. She's the most anime, super girly and feminine. And I've put the story, her story is very relatable to me. And I've put she's fun and innocent. And I said, I bet she's very spiritual. So her little story, what does it say? It says, there's nothing wrong with being the girl next door or with having a resume as long as you're arm. A big believer in hard work and experience and experiencing life just for the sake of it, Trey McKinney has taken every aspect of seasonal position available. Christmas elf, Renaissance festival performer, cashier on Black Friday and even some voluntary work now and then. She doesn't need the money, but understands the benefits of doing things for herself. While, while her externally positive attitude has left her social skills a little lacking, <laughs> that's me, that is, and she is often oblivious to people around her, whatever time Trey has left over from work is always available to be eaten by friends and potential significant others, even if she can't really tell the difference. I felt like she was just innocent, this character for me is very innocent, it's almost like childlike. And what I've put a little stats. This is what they put for the stats. She's an externally, eternally positive. Yeah, this is it. What was the other one called? For Audessa, it was Audessa is always smiling. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, that's quite true actually. Even in the poses where she's got a mouth shut, there's still a little smile going on with her. That's quite cool. But for Trey, it says eternally positive Trey. So she's always positive. I like that. And her little stats are, she's got three stars for study, one for sport, three for social, three for recreational, two for family and five for reliable. How nice is that? She's super reliable. Very, I feel like she'd be very, I feel like she'd be the, a really nice friend to have. That's what I think accessories as well yeah she's all about the accessories this one which i love that so let's get into the little process thing so it starts out with the pose again like like susan this is a very well this is even more of a static pose this really because even the angles it's a stick man even the angles for the shoulders waist and hips they're straight lines so there's literally no movement in this one at all the only bit of movement we've got is again another raised foot. So the raised foot creates a slight bend on a knee. But really that's it. So when it started out it was very, I would almost say too boring. And she even talks about this in the thing. She says the pose was was so, so static she actually ended up bending the arm of the character. And I like this. She bent the arm and then by bending the arm she thought, oh, I could put a bag on that. So what I liked about this was she had the idea, she put the idea down. She then thought to herself, this pose is a bit too boring. She changed the pose. By changing the pose, she started accessorising by adding bags. And what it is, is those bags, those bags had a story. Because you start thinking to yourself, well, where's she been? Has she been shopping? What's she been shopping? And the types of bag as well. One of the bags is like a work bag. So you get the, you get the impression that she's sort of finished work and she's been shopping. <laughs> so there's a little story going on there. And that all happened just because she changed one little thing, which is she changed the angle of the arm. That's amazing, that. So what have I put? I put there's no angles, it's all straight. But I thought, because it's all straight, it's very calming. Yeah, it's very calming, which is what this character's all about. She's all about very being peaceful. So even though it's a boring pose, it actually did sort of capture the a calm feeling, which I thought was was quite cool. And then I've put even a simple pose has vibes. How? And I've because I thought to myself, how is it possible that this really boring simple pose it's still got a sort of life about it? And what I thought was, I thought for me, I think it's because her little hands are little stumps. So you've got these little stumpy things on her hands. That was the only thing I could think about for that. 
because I was trying to work out what is it that's making this little stick man quite exciting <laughs> when he's when he's sort of boring. The next bit, fill in the details. What have I put here? Right hip. Yeah, so because she's got her foot bending up, because her foot is at an angle, her knee's bent, it's ever so slightly pushing her right hip because all, the, all her weight is on her left. No, all her, all her weight is on the right leg. It's, it's, it's pushing the right hip. Yeah, she's got a slight raised left foot, bent knee. And I said, I'll put here, you didn't see that in the first bit. So again, I feel like she sort of changed. She added that to give the pose a bit more excitement. What I also liked about this bit was, we're starting to get the curviness of her hips, which I thought was quite nice. We've also got the bags in there as well. As I put, what is it here? Oh yeah, props tell a story, add excitement. Yeah, so you start thinking, what's in the bags? And it also adds excitement because what it does is it as you as the viewer you, your eyes are being pulled into the pose because you're looking at the pose and then you you're going to look at these bags and you're thinking what's going on here but also those bags they balance out the figure which is cool so it's, i like that so you got you got the the weight on the right foot you got the the left hand, arm is up in the air so again you're getting this balance the body's balanced because she changed the the position of the hand. It's quite amazing, that. Huh? The third bit, I didn't really have many notes for this, but I just said it's starting to come alive. So she's put the shoes on. She's really adding detail to the bags, deciding the shapes of the bags. And she's also put in the little the fabric of the dress and stuff, the skirt. That's it, really. Her hair is always neat. Although it's wavy, the strands are always in place. I like that. So her, her hair is a bit crazy because it's curvy, but it's she's always got it under control. The fourth bit, cleaning up in the inks. What did I put here? Fabric creases where limbs bend, where things stretch. Yeah, I like that. I thought that was quite a nice little tip. Thinking about the fabric, wherever there's a bend... Or, well, it goes, I studied from SVS Learn. I studied a wrinkles course at SVS Learn. And it said about tension. Wherever there's tension and stretching, that's where you get your wrinkles and stuff. It's quite cool, that. So, well, again, it goes into this week's inspirational quote. Even though we're creating these characters here, which are pretend characters, you've got your realism. You've still got to think of the rules of how fabric works. I thought it was quite, quite a powerful thing, that. And then I've also put her eyes are popping. So in this fourth phase, her eyes really come to life. She's got massive eyes. I think that might be why I love her so much. Her eyes really pop. And also, we're seeing her little fingernails. Pointy fingernails. Which I thought was cool. <laughs> I like that. And then the final bit, we're going into the colour. So what have we got? Well, she's got... Sort of like a light brownie type hair. Beautiful brown eyes, big brown eyes. And then she's got this cold pink top on with a little check skirt. It's all, it's very similar actually to the outfit that, what's she called? Odessa wore. In fact, it's almost identical. The only difference is her, her little stockings are under the knee instead of over the knee. I feel like her shoes match her outfit a lot more. Because she's got these little black shoes on. And also, the, it's the bags. For me, the, the bags make this character really cool. And that's it. What, what else is it? Pastel pink and dark grey. Warm and friendly. That's what I thought. I thought these colours were warm. Warm and friendly colours. Because like the grey, it's a warm grey. So by using that warm grey, they're keeping the... what One of the words, reliable, friendly... The girl next door. Beautiful big brown eyes. I love the little triangle shape. Yeah, there's this cool little shape. Because what she's got is she's got this little like shirt thing on. And then you've got your skirt on. But there's a little gap between the skirt and the bottom of her shirt. It creates a little triangle. I just, I, I thought that was a really nice little shape, that. What else is it here? So she's got painted nails. No, she hasn't got painted nails. Which I thought was cool, because it's like the girl next door. 
yeah, keeping it real. It's not got her painted nails on. What else is it around here? That's it, really. And then we look into Trey's other little looks. So, well, this is this is beautiful. These little sketches are amazing. One of them, she's wearing this little frilly, floaty dress. Very cute little dress. And she's got her eyes shut with the, the way they do that thing where all her, her eyes are like little unhappy faces. But be, what when you do like an, an, an unhappy... What, how would you say that? Basically, you're drawing a curve, a curve going downwards, like a, like you're frowning. But when you do that with eyes, it looks so cool. So she looks super happy in that one. One of the other ones, she looks really sad, actually. And then the other one, she looks cool. But I feel like she looks a bit too, almost a bit too sort of, well, she doesn't look like the girl next door. In the final pose, she looks absolutely brilliant. She really does look like the girl next door. Just a, a simple little girl, living her life, really. What have I put? I love her f fluffy hair shapes. Yeah, I love her. I love the shapes of her hair. Fluffiness. I love how Irene... What's she called? It draws lips. Oh, yeah, this was cool. What she, did, what she does is, when she draws lips, she, does, she, does, she doesn't actually draw the lips fully. She draws the line in the middle fully. But the the top and bottom lip, she doesn't actually finish it, which I thought was brilliant. The thing about that, I think it's cool. So that's one of those things I'm gonna I'm gonna keep a note note of that in my head. So when I draw lips in the future, I'm gonna remember that because I think it looks cool. And I notice she does that on all of her characters. It's just like a style thing she does. She's quite cool that. Where else did I put? What else is it? was it? Sexy little frilly outfit. So I've put, I think she nailed the girl next door look because of the pose and the outfit. Yeah. I've put, I want, I've, I've put again, I want to hug her. I just, I, I can't help but feel like I want to hug her. I've put the bags at equal fun shapes and it gives the impressions that she went shopping after work. Again, because one of the bags is like a work bag and the other bag is like a, it's almost like she's been in a jewellery shop or something it's like a very sort of feminine bag y you get the impression that she finished work and went straight shopping <laughs> which I thought was quite funny like a little story thing and then I've also put she seems a bit in she seems a little bit vulnerable which I think that might be what's making me want to hug her yeah that's that was it though so that was basically that what if I was going to sum up this uh, this article overall well there are more characters as well but the thing was i i thought i can't do all of them because this podcast would go on for too long but there's loads of characters including male characters which i've always found male characters a bit boring we've also got one where it looks at two friends so she talks about combining two two characters together to make them look like friends you've also got a group of girls and then you've got a group of guys as well What's cool about this is you're getting like relationship between characters. So I might look at that in another article in the future, maybe. But for this one, overall, I said it's amazing how little things can add so much. It's amazing that just by changing the angle of an arm, it transforms the pose. But I also like how changing one thing starts to change other things. Because, again, everything's related to each other. I, it's amazing to me how much these characters feel alive. Each of these characters feels very unique. But because we've got a little story, I don't know. I feel like these characters are, are alive. And I'd love to actually find out more about these characters. So I loved that. I thought there was a nice balance between... The, the drawing process of how to bring a character to life. But also... The, the story sort of thing. There was a nice balance between the story and the visuals. That's what I said. We've got lots of lots of visuals of this character, which is good for like drawing. But you've also got lots of story stuff as well, which is good for the mind. <laughs> this is I like that. And then really, if if I had to sum up this article, I would say it was fun and, and inspirational. 
that's what I've put fun and inspiring I hope you found it fun and inspiring as well <coughs> Doing. little Dennis has said the time is up <laughs> the time is up on that one I hope you enjoyed it though I love it and I love this book as well and like I said I'll put links and everything in the description and in the show notes so you can look at a, vid- a click look video of this book where I go through the whole book but it's brilliant really fun really fun and I found it really inspiring as well so I hope you enjoyed that and all that's left really is this week's little inspirational quote and it goes to the artist who created this book Irene Flores oh, I love this little quote it's really cool it's from the introduction from the first little bit of the introduction and what this artist does as well is they fill the book up with these little cool little characters <laughs> So the, the book is full of just little fun characters. This book is all about characters, really, which is brilliant. But the quote, so this week's little inspirational quote, even though your drawing style might be heavily influenced by comic books, it has to be rooted in reality. The reason I love that quote is because I think what it's saying is the best way to start drawing is to draw from life. Because what happened for me was I spent a few years doing nothing but realistic drawings. But really, my heart wanted to create these characters. And I thought to myself, I thought, have I wasted all that time when I should have been creating characters? But, But no, so many artists have said that even, well, especially when you're creating things from your imagination and characters and stuff, it has to have, and even in the articles looked at last month, all about the sci-fi articles, those two things. It kept saying about mixing imagination and reality. Because if, if the reality isn't there, the character's not going to be relatable. So it's brilliant. Because I think what happens is a lot of people, they go straight to creating characters without having this rea- rea- reality or realistic stuff going on. Yeah. <laughs> so it's cool. So this week's little inspirational quote. I hope you like this one. Even though your drawing style might be heavily influenced <laughs> influenced by comic books, I'm going to talk like a farmer for this one, I think. Even though your drawing style might be heavily influenced by comic books, it has to be written in reality. Reality.